Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and we are back looking at California High Speed Rail Phase 2. Last time we examined a possible route from Los Angeles to San Diego as it wove its way through some tricky terrain in San Diego County. This time we'll investigate the other component of Phase 2, the route from Merced to Sacramento. Merced, never heard of it. Where is it and why are we starting there? Merced is a city of about 100,000 people in California's Central Valley. It is probably best known as one of the two gateways to Yosemite National Park. Merced is also known for its University of California campus, one of only 10 in California's highest tier of public educational institutions. We start there because Merced is the northern terminus of the initial operating segment that is being built currently. As such, it is part of California High Speed Rail Phase 1 from San Francisco to Los Angeles and Anaheim. When California High Speed Rail Phase 1 is complete, it will meet up with Amtrak San Joaquin's, the Altamont Corridor Express Passenger Rail, and the bus at the Merced Station. On the other end, you have Sacramento. Sacramento is the capital of California, has a population of 550,000, and is the heart of a metro area comprising 2.4 million people. This makes it the sixth largest city and fifth largest metro in the state and 28th largest metro in the country. Major industries in the Sacramento area include government, healthcare, and big tech. Also of note is Siemens Mobility, which manufactures passenger rail locomotives and cars in the area. They might just end up making the trains for California High Speed Rail there. Sacramento is currently one of the termini for the Amtrak San Joaquin service. Sacramento is also on Amtrak's Capital Corridor. Local transit is provided by Sacramento Regional Transit, which consists of light rail and bus services. Sacramento International Airport is the only commercial airport of significance in the Central Valley, north of Fresno. In between, there will be stops at two medium-sized cities, Modesto, population 220,000. Modesto's transit is provided by Stan RTA, which includes regular bus service and express bus service to regional transit centers. And Stockton, population 320,000. Stockton is served by San Joaquin RTD, which has regular bus and bus rapid transit. Rail includes Amtrak and the Altamont Corridor Express. Stockton has the Stockton Metropolitan Airport, but its use for commercial flights is limited. One thing to keep in mind is that high-speed rail is going to alter the passenger rail landscape here significantly, so existing services may become obsolete or need to adapt to the high-speed rail alignment. Before we start with the route, let's take a look at some things the California High-Speed Rail Authority is or will be doing on its initial 119-mile construction segment to get an idea of how engineering challenges are being addressed in the Central Valley. Starting on the southern end, we have the town of Shafter, California High Speed Rail got $200 million from the Chrissy program to trench the area through here, and that includes the BNSF Bakersfield subdivision lines. The solution extends for almost four miles, and the rail right-of-way is about 100 feet wide for both sets of tracks. This avoids seven at-grade crossings. A little farther north is the Wasco Viaduct. This is a structure that allows the California high-speed rail tracks to transition from one side of the BNSF right-of-way to the other in a curve. In Fresno, we start with the Cedar Viaduct, which is about a mile of flyover infrastructure to transition into downtown Fresno from the south in a curve. Probably most important to the example is the fact that this crosses both Cedar Avenue and the State Route 99 freeway mid-intersection. In the downtown Fresno area, there is 300 feet of width to work with. In this case, north of the Cedar Viaduct, the authority has opted to stay at grade and move existing infrastructure either over or under the tracks. That then transitions into a trench to deal with freight spur lines while simultaneously interacting with a highway flyover. One more in Fresno proper. 
this frontage road, Golden State Boulevard was in the way, so they opted to move it and put the California high-speed rail tracks in the old roadway alignment. Last example, at the northeastern Fresno city limits, the San Joaquin River Viaduct, an oft-used example of California high-speed rail infrastructure, this time tackling the compound problem of needing to fly over the Union Pacific tracks and cross the San Joaquin River. All these options are available to similar situations likely encountered from Merced to Sacramento, as alignments and terrain are similar. Let's get started. We're looking at the future Merced California High Speed Rail Station site. This is what it will look like when completed. Amtrak and Ace will share this station, although, as mentioned, things may change if High Speed Rail is expanded north of here. Coming into Merced from the south, they're looking at taking out the entire block southwest of the right-of-way to make room for the tracks. According to the buildhsr.com map, this will continue to the northwest all the way through downtown. This would include taking out several car dealerships. Who knows what the authority will have to buy the city to make up for that. The route here will also need to cross Bear Creek and then within one third of a mile duck under State Route 99. There is a road here called SP Avenue that will likely get the Golden State Boulevard treatment and in the process they'll take out about half a dozen homes. Five miles northwest of Merced is Atwater and the situation here is similar to the Shafter example we looked at only a little shorter and with three crossings instead of seven. SR-99 crosses over the freight right-of-way twice in this specific area. The right-of-way is also constrained, so probably looking at putting both California High Speed Rail and UP in a trench. That will need to be about a mile and a half before coming back up to cross a canal. There is an at-grade crossing here that they'll likely close. Another 10 miles northwest of Merced at Livingston, conforming to the freight right-of-way would limit speed here to about 150 miles an hour. The buildhsr.com map has the route cutting the corner. This is similar to the Wasco and San Joaquin River examples, combined with the added complication of needing to fly over SR-99. I have a three mile radius curve possible over the Merced River, which would enable about 200 miles per hour. The next complication comes into play outside of Turlock at the SR-99 Golden State Boulevard exit. The solution is simple, get rid of the divided highway. Then the California high speed rail tracks can go where the northbound lanes are currently. The rail right of way through parts of Turlock is only 100 feet wide, so we're looking at another joint trench. This one looks like it would need to go under nine currently at grade crossings. Only one of those looks like it can be closed. The trench would be about four miles long. Just south of the Modesto station, there is a 110 mile per hour S curve that cannot be avoided or improved without tunneling. That does not appear to be indicated on the California High Speed Rail map, so the train will simply slow here. The right of way through downtown Modesto is narrow with six at grade crossings. Given the propensity toward elevated stations so far, they will likely choose Viaduct here. This is supported by the fact that they'll need to go over the Tuolumne River a mile from the station. Northwest of Modesto, another elevated segment at Salida. This one only about a mile long. This would be a trench, but there are irrigation canals on either end. Just northwest of that would be a 1,000 foot long bridge to cross the Stanislaus River floodplain. They may also switch sides with freight in this area with a pergola viaduct. Between Ripon and Manteca, near the junction of State Routes 99 and 120, things get complicated. The route on the California High Speed Rail map would start plowing through hundreds of structures here with a station site that makes no sense. The lower resolution map implies usage of the State Route 99 corridor, but this is also not tenable. 
It makes sense that the route deviates from freight. There are a couple of large Union Pacific rail yards that would be difficult to bypass. The alternative I came up with mostly skirts Manteca and Stockton to the east with curves at about 175 miles per hour, which was the fastest I could manage while minimizing damage. You'd still be looking at about 25 structures destroyed and probably 100 properties crossed for the alternative. Let's go over this part by part. Breaking out of the rail right-of-way next to State Route 99, the California High-Speed Rail Line would rise over SR 99 in a 175 mile per hour curve and take out about 10 houses in the process. This would continue due north, passing over BNSF tracks near their Stockton Intermodal facility. The route would enter a high-speed curve over the Stockton Diverting Canal and then into another 175 mile per hour curve before getting to my choice for a Stockton station site. The site would be on State Route 88, which has good access to State Route 99 and downtown. The southern end of the station site would have access to a rail spur that hooks into the UP Fresno subdivision near downtown Stockton. Another station possibility would be in the Central California Traction Company right-of-way near the intersection of Hammer Lane and State Route 99, which would also provide good freeway access and the possibility of a rail transit connection to downtown. Also, lots of fresh transit-oriented development opportunities there. One thing that's missing here is connections to existing transit, but there may not be much choice. The intersection with BNSF right-of-way at the intermodal yard is an option, but it's not the most desirable living area. The route would then continue in the CCT right-of-way for about 10 miles through Lodi, at which point the route transitions from CCT to Union Pacific at high speed. This transition would need to rise up over a CCT spur, blow through a large warehouse, cross the Mokalume River, and then cross the intersection of Woodbridge Road and State Route 99 diagonally, Cedar Viaduct style, so it's a pretty involved section. They'll need quite a bit of viaduct, but other than the warehouse, the destruction would be remarkably minimal considering. The Union Pacific right-of-way north of there is straight for almost 30 miles. However, it starts encountering residential aspects of the Sacramento suburbs after about 15 miles. I'm counting 13 at-grade intersections that will need to be resolved. I think this can be sealed without issue, but I'm assuming speed through these residential areas will be limited to 125 miles per hour, possibly 110 miles per hour if this section is blended like parts of Phase 1. From US 50 into the Sacramento Valley Station, the route is grade separated with a couple of exceptions. However, there are some slow speed curves like this one next to CSU Sacramento. A slow speed Y would likely limit speed to 30 or 40 miles per hour. So it's going to be under 60 miles per hour through the urban part of Sacramento, but only for about five miles. The last few miles may require some creative engineering to interact with two Union Pacific Ys, but the right-of-way is plenty wide for two more tracks. Speaking of those Ys, one presents an interesting opportunity for expansion to Yuba City and Chico to the north in a hypothetical 82-mile Phase 3 that has about zero chance of happening before the war with the machines. Back to Sacramento, this is a terminus for California High-Speed Rail Phase 2, so they may simply take over part of the existing Sacramento Valley Station, similar to the plan for LA Union Station. The Sacramento Station is located at the edge of the downtown area a couple of blocks from the recently completed Golden One Center, home of the Sacramento Kings. However, the station is in the middle of a large area that is actively being developed into mixed use right now. So there you have it. We've managed to get from Merced to Sacramento without too much damage. But before we get to the fiscal damage, let's talk about travel times. Sacramento to Modesto, 77 miles in 33 minutes. 
at an average of 140 miles per hour. Stockton to Merced, 66 miles in 26 minutes, at an average of 152 miles per hour. Modesto to Bakersfield, 251 miles in 90 minutes, for an average of 167 miles per hour. Stockton to San Jose, 190 miles in 67 minutes, at an average of 170 miles per hour. Sacramento to San Francisco, 283 miles in 109 minutes, at an average of 156 miles per hour. That route is so circuitous, it's three times longer and about 20 minutes slower than driving. Sacramento to Los Angeles, 430 miles in 2 hours 21 minutes at an average of 183 miles per hour. Of those routes, only Sacramento to LA is mentioned in Proposition 1A at 2 hours 20 minutes required, so they are cutting it thin and delicious. Pretty ballsy putting a 180 mile per hour average speed requirement in the law and you definitely won't be driving between those two faster than that. That is also about half an hour faster than flying, all things considered. Now the big question, what is all this speed in the Delta going to cost? My method is simple and quick. I look at what the right-of-way is like. Does it exist already, or are we cutting new right-of-way? I look at what kind of track we're putting down. Is it at grade, aerial, or trench? where the track is going, urban, suburban, or rural areas, and lastly, I'm adjusting for regional variations in engineering and construction cost. In this case, California is on the expensive side. Considering these factors, I came up with a cost for this 114 mile Merced to Sacramento route of 20.3 billion in 2028 dollars. That's a similar cost per mile to the Bakersfield to Merced section of the Central Valley. Adjusted for inflation to a more realistic completion year of 2050, that is $35.1 billion. If you recall, in my Los Angeles to San Diego video, I said Phase 1 plus San Diego would be about $190 billion. Add this in to complete the 800-mile California high-speed rail system. And you're looking at about 225 billion, which is actually what I predicted in my California high speed rail is in big, big trouble video. Spooky. I hope you enjoyed exploring this route in closer detail with me. If you have any opinions about this video or just high speed rail in general, please leave them in the comments. Plenty more city pair investigations like this one still to come more Federal Railroad High Speed Rail Corridor videos left, and another Stu's News on the last Friday of the month. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.